Hello and welcome to Algebra 2 Lesson 75. In this lesson we're going to learn about the composition of functions. So at some point in your Algebra 2 course, or this might even happen to you in an Algebra 1 course, you're going to come across this topic known as function composition, or again you could say the composition of functions. So what this really involves is some heavy substituting and some simplifying. It's a very, very easy topic once you understand the notation that you're going to be working with. So the first thing you're probably going to see in your textbook, if f and g are functions, this is read g of f of x, and you could also write this like this. You could say g of f of x, and then another way to write it, a way that you've probably never seen before, you'll have g of f of x. This way right here is the way that confuses most students. It's a foreign notation. People always look at that and think it's a multiplication symbol. It's not. You can see that it's not filled in. This is not g multiplied by f in any way, shape, or form. So this is g composed with f. Okay, that's what this is basically telling us. But it's just a fancy way of saying, hey, I'm going to take f of x and I'm going to plug it in for x in g of x. And we'll see that when we get to the examples in a second. Then this guy right here, we've kind of flipped the order around. So here this is f of g of x. And we could also write this like this. We could say f of g of x. Essentially all I'm doing here is I'm taking g of x and I'm plugging it in for x in the function f of x. So this section is all going to be about just substituting and simplifying. So before we kind of jump in and look at the first example, I want to make sure you understand the most basic thing when it comes to function notation. If I take this f of x here, and in this case it's 2x minus 3, so that's our function. If I ask you, what is f of 2? What am I asking for? 2 is in the place of x. So what I'm asking for is, what is the function's value when I plug in a 2 for x? All I'm asking for. So this is 2 multiplied by, plug in a 2 for x, then minus 3. 2 times 2 is obviously 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. So f of 2, or the function's value, when the independent variable x is 2, is 1. All right? So you can say f of 2 is 1. Now, I'm not limited to just plugging in numbers for my variable. I can take something more complex and plug it in. So what if I said I want f of... I don't know, let's say x minus 1. Well, all I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in an x minus 1 for x, and I'm going to evaluate. So in this case, I would have 2 multiplied by, for x, I'm plugging in an x minus 1. So I'm going to use parentheses, so x minus 1, that quantity, then minus 3. So I'm going to use my distributive property. 2 times x is 2x, then minus, 2 times 1 is 2, then minus 3. You have 2x, which you can't do anything with. Negative 2 minus 3 is minus 5. So f of x minus 1 is equal to 2x minus 5. Now, I didn't get a numerical value there, but I still found what the function would be if I plugged in an x minus 1 for the independent variable x. That's all I'm asking for. So that's all we're really going to be doing here. We're just plugging things in and simplifying. So for the first example, we're given f of x, which equals 2x minus 3, and we're given g of x, which is equal to 4x plus 4. What we want to find is f of g of 1 plus x. Now, if I saw g of 1 plus x, what would that mean? It would mean that I'm taking a 1 plus x, and I'm plugging it in for x in that function, g of x. So you would start by finding this part first, because whatever this is, that's what I'm plugging in for x in f of x. So you're starting on the inside and you're working your way out. So let's find g of 1 plus x, or you could flip that around and say this is g of x plus 1, whatever you want to do. So this equals 4 multiplied by, again, I'm plugging in for x there. What am I plugging in? I'm plugging in an x plus 1, so x plus 1 and then plus 4. So 4 times x is 4x, then plus, 4 times 1 is 4, then plus 4. So this gives me what? 4x, can't do anything with that, then plus, 4 plus 4 is 8. 
So I get 4x plus 8 as the result there. So now let's go back up here. I'm just going to write that g of x plus 1 is equal to 4x plus 8. And I can erase this. So now that I know that g of 1 plus x or g of x plus 1, however you want to say that, is 4x plus 8, I can really say that this problem is f of this right here is 4x plus 8, so f of 4x plus 8. And then I can just plug a 4x plus 8 in for x in this guy right here. So this would be what? It would be 2 multiplied by the quantity 4x plus 8 and then minus 3. So 2 times 4x is 8x. And then 2 times 8 is 16, so plus 16 and then minus 3. So 8x, there's nothing I can do with that. 16 minus 3 is obviously 13, so you get 8x plus 13 as your answer. So the result here, f of g of 1 plus x is equal to 8x plus 13. So nothing really super complicated here. It's just a lot of substituting and simplifying. All right, let's take a look at another example. So we have f of x equals negative x minus 1. We have g of x equals x plus 5. And we want to find f of g of negative 2x. So again, I'm going to start out with this guy right here. What is g of negative 2x? Well, again, all I'm going to do is plug a negative 2x in for x in g of x. So this would be what? I'm plugging in a negative 2x there. So it would just be negative 2x and then plus 5. Super, super simple. So now all this would be is f of... I know that this part right here is this. So f of negative 2x plus 5 would give me what? Well, I'm plugging this in for this right here. Be careful of that negative out in front. You want to account for that. So I'm going to have a negative times the quantity negative 2x plus 5. That's what I'm plugging in for x right there. And then minus 1. So I'm going to distribute that negative to each term. So in other words, you can think about this as a negative 1 multiplying each term. Just going to change the sign. So instead of negative 2x, I'll have 2x. Instead of positive 5, I'll have minus 5. And then I'll have minus 1. So you'll have 2x. You can just say negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6. So this ends up being 2x minus 6. So f of g of negative 2x ends up being 2x minus 6. All right, for the next one, we'll look at g of x, which equals x squared minus 1, and h of x, which equals 3x plus 4. We're trying to find g of h of x over 3. All right, so again, I want to start with the inside right here. So we want to find h of x over 3. So what is that going to be? Well, here's h of x. So we want h of x over 3. So this equals, I'm just going to plug this in for x, in my function. So we'd have 3 multiplied by x over 3, then plus 4. What's going to happen is this will cancel with this, and I'm left with x. So this ends up being x plus 4. So this part right here is nothing more than x plus 4. So this would be equal to g of x plus 4, and that would be what? I'm taking x plus 4, that quantity, and I'm plugging it in for x in g of x. So I would have the quantity x plus 4. That would be squared. And then I'm subtracting away 1. So I'm going to use my special products formula there. I can square x plus 4, that quantity, pretty quickly. This would be x squared plus 2 times x times 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times x is 8x. So this would be plus 8x. And then lastly, plus 4 squared is 16, and then minus 1. So you'd have x squared plus 8x, and then 16 minus 1 is 15, so plus 15. So we can say g of h of x over 3 is equal to x squared plus 8x plus 15. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have g of x is equal to x plus 1. h of x is equal to negative 4x minus 1. So we want g of h of negative 3x. So all I want to do is start out by finding h of negative 3x. 
So h of negative 3x, just plug a negative 3x in for x here, what would that give me? You'd have negative 4 multiplied by negative 3x, plug it in for x there, then minus 1. Negative 4 times negative 3 is 12, so you'd have 12x and then minus 1. So this guy right here is 12x minus 1. So this would become g of 12x minus 1, which equals what? Plug in a 12x minus 1 there. So you would have 12x minus 1, then plus 1. Pretty simple. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So this just turns into 12x. So g of h of negative 3x is just 12x. All right, what about f of x equals 4x plus 5? and then g of x equals x cubed minus 2x. So here we want f of g of 3x. So I start with g of 3x. So g of 3x, this would be what? Plug in a 3x there, so you'd have 3x cubed minus two times, I'm plugging in a 3x there as well, and what does that give me? 3x cubed would be what? Three cubed is 27, right? Three times three is nine, nine times three is 27, so 27 and then x cubed, and then minus, two times three is six, six times x is six x. So you get 27 x cubed minus six x, and I wanna take this guy, and I wanna plug it in for x here. So in other words, I wanna say that I have f of 27 x cubed minus six x, and this would give me what? It would give me four multiplied by 27 x cubed, minus 6x, again, just plugging this in for x there, then you have plus 5. All right, so what does this give us? We would have 4 times 27, which is 108, then times x cubed, then minus, 4 times 6 is 24, then times x, then plus 5. So we can say f of g of 3x is equal to 108x cubed minus 24x plus 5. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have g of x equals 2x minus 4. We have f of x equals 4x. So we want g of f of x plus 1. So if I had f of x plus 1, this part right here, what would that give me? This is 4 multiplied by, this gets plugged in for x. So 4 times the quantity x plus 1. This gives me 4x plus 4. So that's what's going right here. So in other words, this is g of 4x plus 4. So this would be equal to, I have a 2 multiplied by, plug in a 4x plus 4 in for x. So 2 times the quantity 4x plus 4, and then you have minus 4. Use the distributive property. 2 times 4x is 8x, then plus 2 times 4 is 8, then minus 4. So you'd have 8x 8 minus 4 is 4, so 8x plus 4. So g of f of x plus 1 gives us 8x plus 4. Let's take a look at one more. Again, it's a very easy concept, as you can see. You're just taking one function, and you're using it as an input in another function. So we have f of x equals 4x plus 2. We have g of x equals 2x plus 5. So what is f of g of x plus 3? So again, I start out with g of x plus 3. So g of x plus 3 gives me 1. This would be 2 times this quantity, right? I'm plugging that in for x. So 2 times the quantity x plus 3, and then plus 5. 2 times x would be 2x, plus 2 times 3 is 6, plus 5. So this gives me 2x plus 6 plus 5 is 11. So that's this part right here. So in other words, you would have f of 2x plus 11. So this gives me what? You would have four times in place of x, I'm plugging in a two x plus 11. So four times the quantity two x plus 11, and then plus two. So use my distributive property. Four times two x is eight x, and then plus four times 11 is 44, and then you have plus two. Eight x would stay the same, nothing I can do with that. 44 plus two is just 46. So we end up with f of g of x plus 3 has 8x plus 46.